The hippopotamus is native to Africa. There are two species of hippo, the common hippo and the pygmy hippo. The common hippo is an amphibious mammal spending much of the day in the water. It is native to sub-Saharan Africa and found in large numbers in East Africa. They come out at night to forage grasses on dry land, feeding for five or six hours at a time. In comparison, the pygmy hippo spends the majority of its time on land in the swamps and forests of West Africa. This much smaller species forages for leaves, roots, and fruits on the forest floor and can even stand on its hind legs to reach higher vegetation. The common hippo can grow up to 5 meters long, or 16.4 feet, and weigh 4 tons. This is comparable to the white rhino in size and weight. They are well adapted to their aquatic life. They can hold their breath for up to 30 minutes underwater. Their eyes, ears, and nostrils close in the water. They are located high up on their head so that the rest of their body can remain submerged, often sleeping like this for up to 16 hours a day. There is debate as to whether hippos can actually swim. Underwater footage shows hippos walking along the bottom of rivers and lakes, but some question whether they would be able to do that to have reached some of the islands they inhabit. Despite having partly webbed feet, the hippo's body form is not conducive to swimming. It seems that the islands they inhabit were once connected to the mainland during the Pleistocene. Therefore, analysis of their aquatic movements has shown that they effectively gallop underwater, pushing off from the substrate and gliding through the water. Hippos can move at 5 miles per hour underwater, but can run on land up to 19 miles per hour. Getting caught in the crossfire of one of these impressive beasts would be very unfortunate. It is estimated that about 500 people are killed by hippos every year. The common hippos are aggressive and territorial when in the water. Males defend territories for mating rights, but not for food. Female hippos are protective of their young and highly aggressive towards the end of their gestation period and once their calf has been born. Common hippo males live in bachelor groups whilst females form bonds with their daughters. Female hippos sometimes care for each other's young, and baby hippos spend a great deal of time playing with one another. Although common hippos are often seen in large groups together, they are not necessarily in a tight social bond with the other hippos in that group. The lifespan of these animals in the wild is 30 to 35 years, and females reach maturity at approximately 8 years of age. The pygmy hippo, in contrast, is listed as critically endangered. There are thought to be less than 3,000 individuals left in the wild. They are considerably smaller than common hippos, weighing less than 300 kilograms. They have smaller bodies and smaller heads, which are adapted for weaving through the dense jungle foliage. They also have longer legs, and their feet are less webbed than the common hippo, owing to the greater amount of time they spend on the land. Pygmy hippos are not sociable animals like their larger cousins and only interact with one another during the mating season. Of course, mothers and their young can spend a great deal of time together. Calves are weaned from their mothers at around 8 months old. And, although they reach sexual maturity between 3 and 5 years old, the young can remain with their mothers for up to 8 years. The pygmy hippo prefers wet vegetation close to rivers. They spend a lot of their time in swamps and swallows, often lying near rivers and sleeping in burrows. They can still hold their breath underwater for many minutes and often dive to feed on underwater vegetation. But they spend more of their time on land than the common hippo, foraging the forest floor or lying near the riverbanks, sheltering from the sun. Massive deforestation has led to the pygmy hippo's demise through loss of habitat. About 80% of the original forest in West Africa has been destroyed. The hippos are also threatened by poaching. Like their cousins, the pygmy hippo can also be aggressive. They are not known to be territorial, but they will attack intruders in their environment if they feel threatened. They open their mouth wide and a big yawn displaying their huge canines as a threat. The question here today is, could hippos survive in the Amazon? There are similarities between the habitat of the Amazon and that inhabited by the hippo. 
The Amazon has an abundance of waterways that would be suited to the common hippopotamus. Some large savannas and grasslands would provide abundant forage. Slow-moving rivers, with shallow pools and nearby vegetation, are ideal for this species of hippo. The dense, tropical forest, however, would be more suited to the pygmy hippo. Their body shape and structure are more conducive to dense vegetation, and they enjoy the hidden wallows and swamps within the forest. Both species of hippo could withstand the climatic conditions of the Amazon and would be well adapted to the average temperature found there. The Amazon has a very consistent year-round climate without distinct seasons. The temperature remains around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. Liberia in West Africa is home to the pygmy hippo and has a tropical climate with temperatures similar to that of the Amazon. In many parts of sub-Saharan Africa, however, there are distinct seasons and temperatures can dip significantly during the winter. But the common hippo thrives in the warmer months and would do well in the Amazonian temperatures. Interestingly, there are already a small number of hippos living within the Amazon. In the 1980s, the infamous drug lord, Pablo Escobar, illegally imported four hippos as pets. They remained in his garden, adding to the menagerie that he built over the years. Following his death in 1993, instead of being captured and relocated, authorities left the hippos alone. There are now 130 hippos, all descended from Escobar's original four. They have clearly thrived in the region, owing to the abundant food available, favorable climate and habitat, and lack of natural predators. Projections show that there could be as many as 400 of them by 2030. Many locals are not opposed to the hippo's existence, but authorities are to declare them an invasive species. Some attacks on humans have already been reported locally. In Africa, as human populations grow, there is often conflict between people and hippos. Farmland encroaching onto hippo grazing lands and river access points is most often the reason for these conflicts. Hippos can raid crops and cause devastating losses for farmers and local communities. The economic impact of raiding hippos can be huge and often results in hippo relocation or culling. The introduction of such a destructive herbivore can cause significant upset amongst the people living within and around the Amazon rainforest. Furthermore, the delicate ecological balance within the Amazonian rainforest could be massively disrupted by the presence of the hippopotamus. From their foraging behavior to the large quantities of dung they release into the rivers and waterways, hippos are likely to change the ecology of the region. It has been reported in Kenya that some rivers and lakes are starved of oxygen. This significantly damages the aquatic biodiversity, including important fish species. This is due to the immense amount of hippo dung excreted into the water, feeding the microbes that rob the water of oxygen. With no natural predators, the hippo could outcompete many other species. In the water, they could come into conflict with the river-dwelling manatee, and on land, they would compete for herbaceous foods with the likes of the capybara and tapirs. In fact, the habitat and feeding behavior of both the capybara and the tapir is not so dissimilar from the hippo. Enjoying time both in and out of the water, these semi-aquatic mammals feed on vegetation along the rivers and within the forest. So, in answer to the question, could hippos survive in the Amazon? Yes, they could. Not only would they survive, they would probably thrive. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Time, time.